right, guten tag, and welcome to Traveling Dirty. I don't know why the German. Um, oh, well, I know. So currently we are in Oklahoma in our winter gear here because it's um, snow coming down to about six foot and then it turns to rain. Uh, and we're getting ready to roll out tomorrow to go to South Texas. And Which is called sleet. Sleet. Uh, there you go. There's a word for it. Who knew? Sleet. Um, <laughs> meteorologist Maggie. She, she tracks all our weather. I don't know why she put us here. It's cold. Um, but anyway, getting ready to head to Texas, move a little further south, and uh, find some warmer weather. It's uh, been a while since we did a video. Uh, we spent a month in Custer, South Dakota, and we wanted to uh, do a couple videos on that, break it down. So, uh, we three were part very series. busy in South Dakota. <laughs> so very busy. A lot happening. That's why we're a little behind. So And work travel got in the way, and... Work got in the way, so and fun. we'll be high. Fun got in the way, and too. fun, yeah, fun. Yeah. So we're gonna do uh, hopefully three videos on South Dakota. We'll call it the good, the badass, and the ugly. Uh, and part one, the last one, the ugly. We're gonna tell you about that right yeah. now. Um, so leaving Wyoming and going to South Dakota. You want to tell them about that little adventure? So you have to take a two-lane road to go from Rollins, Wyoming to Casper, north into Casper, to where we could hit the interstate to go across into South Dakota where we needed to go. Um, I don't know, we're maybe 15 miles outside of Rawlings, uh, Rollins City proper, and uh, Steve makes a comment about the volts on the battery for the truck and that they keep dropping and he doesn't know if that's normal, if that's... Oh, it's what not it normal. is <laughs> well you just mentioned they were kind of low at first because and he wasn't sure if that's what it did when we pulled the trailer and all that so he kept an eye on it and of course i'm freaking out and uh worried about it and then he finally says yeah there's a problem they keep dropping and then lights come on the truck and things like that um so we i mentioned maybe going back to gas uh, to rollins but there's there, a walmart that was it there was nothing in rollins to begin with and no. this was a sunday so there wouldn't have been anything open so our best bet yes. was to shoot for casper right before labor day yes mm -hmm. so we decided to keep pushing and um as we rolled into the auto zone in casper wyoming i got out of the truck and i said Woo, I think something's wrong with our toilet system or septic system. It smells really bad. And uh, Steve went and got the AutoZone person. She comes out, and before she's even to the truck, she's kind of looking and going, oh, it's your batteries. They're, they're about to blow up, and evidently batteries have a sulfur smell. So when they're about to go, yeah. they When they start the boiling, smell. they smell like rotten eggs. And uh, that's what was happening, just the old battery that was done, and it was cooking itself. We have two um, batteries in our truck, though. Uh -huh. So yeah. one was dead and the other one was so, pretty much yeah. dead. We replaced the boiling one. Us. Truck still wouldn't start because we were doing such low voltage on the other battery the whole way. It was just dead. So we decided yeah. replace them both. Then we know where we stand on batteries. Uh, replaced them both. Truck fired right up. Started Off back down the road about 20 miles later. Flat tire on the trailer. On the trailer. So we pulled into Douglas. Oh wait, we have three tires on oh, each side. Triple Luckily, axle. Luckily this was a middle tire so that we didn't have to immediately pull over. We and could at least get to an exit and get off and we were like a mile from an exit. So we went to Douglas, Wyoming. Yeah, found a tire store on Google, figured we'd pull right in. Of course it was Sunday in a small town and they were closed. But let me clarify, I did Google it. And there are two tire shops. One that was 24 hours with no phone number or address. The other one had an address and phone number, but no hours. So I tried them both. One had a, a voicemail box that was full, and the other one just went to a, an answer machine. So we thought we'd try the one that had the address. And yeah. Yeah. So they were closed. Roadside assistance was four hours away at a minimum. Uh, so we decided to, you know, change a tire in the parking lot of a closed tire store. But and that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> one of the cats decides to have nervous um bodily functions yes. in the crate and right as we pull into the tire place so both cats are covered in it so while steve's outside trying to get the tire unwrapped from the axle i'm in the camper thank goodness for pumps and generators and all that bathing cats in our shower to get off of them and, mm. and cleaning their crate so that so, that's clean there were projects for everyone in yes. douglas wyoming yes uh, so we got the tire changed, the tread wrapped around the axle, I spent like an hour trying to cut it off with uh, 
a pair of metal snips and a utility knife because that was the best tools we had available. So uh, tire change was actually pretty easy once we got the tread unwrapped from the axle. Uh, got back on the road, but it was uh, you know a nice little five hour drive that ten hours, eleven hours later we finally pulled in mm. just before dark at our camping spot and got set up. Um, so that was definitely the worst uh, of the ugly experience so far. Um, also, we became, uh, yeah, you don't notice when uh, you're in Phoenix and Nevada and it's 112, uh, there's really no chance of finding out you might have a little leak in your roof. Um, yeah, but when you hit uh, Rollins and it starts raining, you realize Custer. there's a Custer. Yeah, there's a little leak in the roof. So, um, did have a few days of sun and got it, uh, got that squared away. Um, but, you know, just another little ugly spot on the trip. Yeah. Uh, you were looking at two South Dakotans. Yes, we claimed residency there. <laughs> so, ugliness. The DMV, the tax place, the car registration. Nicest it's, people, yeah. nicest people. But the process, it's just like every other state. Nobody wants to go through that. Well, except a lot of these small towns in South Dakota only have limited hours and days. Yes. That they're open for DMV. There was a DMV right by us in Custer. I popped in there, just asked them a few questions about getting a driver's license. And they're like, oh yeah, this, that, the other. Here's an application. Bring it back when you're ready. Went back about a week later and didn't realize I just happened to be there on a Wednesday. Because it's only open on Wednesday. And only the first three Wednesdays, Wednesdays. of the month. Otherwise, you got to drive to Rapid City to handle the business. Uh, went to change the titles over and Custer said, no, oh, your residence now in... A different county so you have to go back to that county so we had to make another trip hour long to rapid city and uh stand in line there and get that done and pay our taxes on it but it's all done so we're rocking some very cool mount rushmore south dakota license plates on the truck now be jealous yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, i have to say it's my best id picture i've ever taken i was pretty excited <laughs> about that yeah actually it helps when you're the only person there and the lady's like oh tilt your head a little that way okay that's good yes. um so yeah for uh any uh thanks folks thinking about RVN, uh, South Dakota, Texas, and Florida are the three friendliest states uh, if you have no real permanent address. Um, so South Dakota, no state income tax, you only have to stay there one day every five years to be a resident. Um, just some other little perks like that that we found, so we decided yeah. to uh, ditch the Arizona driver's license and uh, become South Dakotans. Yeah, um, um, anything else that was real ugly? I don't think so. I think that's all I can think of as far as what we we dealt with there. That was tons of fun. Yeah, mostly not in South Carolina just, or South Dakota, just on our way to it. Uh, the, uh, the travel trip getting there. Uh, and just the experience of standing in line at DMVs and such. Yeah. Always fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll keep this one short. We've got two more videos coming uh, talking about the cool stuff and the even cooler stuff that we did in South Dakota. Uh, so look for those to come real quick. Until then, keep traveling dirty.